Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our virtual Make Room Conference. We are so happy to have you all here uh, for our opening, and uh, we've decided to do this conference online as opposed to canceling or postponing it, and we are so happy to open up with my pastor, the pastor of Second Arnold Baptist Church, Pastor Richard L. Hall Sr. How you doing, sir? We're doing fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you for asking. Yes. How about you, sir? I'm doing good. Doing good. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, coming on and being a part of this conference. It's called the Make Room Conference. And the reason why we did this, this was inspired by uh, Jonathan McReynolds, his album and his book entitled Making Room. And one of the things that I wanted us to deal with in this conference is how can we as Christians make room for God? Because we have so many things going on in our lives that we've forgotten about God. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to deal with on tonight is, uh, yes, I'm a Christian, but what do I do when the walls come down on me? Everything is coming down on me. So we want to talk a little bit about that um, on tonight. Um, you know me since I was a little baby boy. <laughs> yeah, a little plug running around, yeah. <laughs> and so you've seen me transition, grow up in the church, uh, doing different things. Uh, and you've known my story on many times where I wanted to leave the church. Amen. And there are some Christians who feel as though uh, I can't take this pressure. I can't take so much. There's so much I can take from people. Um, so my first question for you is, uh, I believe in God, but it seems as if God doesn't hear me. Uh, so, so as a Christian, I come to church every Sunday, but I don't know if God is really listening to me. I pray to him and I, I try to seek him, but I don't know if he's really listening to me. So what kind of assurance do we need to have to know that God is there? Well, God hears all prayers and he hears our hearts. So one thing is that, you know, we can't play, with, play on God. When we come to God, we must come clean to God. Uh, th there's a story uh, that I'm reminded of in, in uh, Luke um, chapter 18, where two men went up to the temple to pray. And uh, one was a Pharisee and one was a tax collector. And the Pharisee stood before God and told God how good he was. Uh, but the tax collector prayed a simple prayer. He said, have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and the Bible says that he went home justified. God heard his prayer. God hears his prayer. God hears our prayers even when we don't think uh, that he hears our prayers. Uh, there, there are times when God chooses uh, uh, not to answer our prayer mm. in spite of our relationship. In spite of our relationship. Uh, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Father, take this cup from me. Mm -hmm. and, and God said no. Uh, you know, uh, Paul, you know, who established all the churches, went around establishing churches, had a thorn in his flesh, and he asked God three times, and God said no. God said no. And, and, and sometimes God does this, especially in Paul's case, to keep our ego in check, mm. keep our ego in check. And, and the word ego stands for easing God out. You know, so God, God, God does this so we won't become so self-dependent and we won't get the big head and ease God out. Uh, even when it seems like our prayers are uh, not being answered, uh, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. When, when it seems like God is not present, just keep on praying. Keep praying. Remember. Uh, that 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 uh, God is unseen, and we may not see God, but God sees us. He sees us, so God can see us. So even when it seems like your prayers are not heard, let me give you an illustration. Um, I'm upstairs now, and um, I know my wife's downstairs. I know she's down. I can't see her. 
Right. And 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 I and if I call her, you know, she might have some earplugs on or something, and she may not hear me. Wow. Yeah, she she may not hear me, but she's there. Right. She's, and I know she's there. You know, and that I can't see her, mm -hmm. but I know she's down there. And so that that's how we have to approach God. We we cannot see him, but we know he's there. We know he's there. Wow. Uh that was a good illustration. Where you got that from? Yeah. <laughs> I borrowed that from Sadie. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's a good thing for us to especially for young people because I I believe that we're in a generation now where if I don't get an answer right away, then I'm just gonna move on to something next. So we're we're not in the in the waiting portion uh, of our lives. Right, right, and then then that's that's uh that's where the assurance come in uh, that you you just need to know that he's there, and 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 that's you know when we ask uh, that question. Uh, how can I be assured? That's a faith question. Mm. That's a faith question. And 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 sometimes God says, uh, I hear you. I hear you. But I want you to want me more than the things that you want. Mm. You know, uh, 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 is our faith, th this is the question, is our faith in God or in our prayer? Wow. You know, the Bible says, have faith in God. You know, and sometimes we go to God just having faith in our prayers, believing that we can ask for what we want and we're going to get it. But if our faith is not in God, then that presents a problem for us. Remember, all prayers are answered. Uh, there, there's a difference between, listen at this, there's a difference between an answered prayer. Uh, and a petition granted, mm -hmm. you know, a request granted. There's a difference between God answering our prayer and granting our request. And sometimes we think God is not answering our prayer. He doesn't hear us because he doesn't grant our request. Mm -hmm. He didn't grant his son's request to take the cup from him, but he heard his prayer. He heard his prayer. So, so God hears our prayers even though he may not grant our request, sometimes requests are denied. And then sometimes, like you were saying just now, requests are delayed. But prayer is answered. He may not answer like we want to, but it's answered. Sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says wait, because maybe we're not ready to be at that particular position or at that place in our life. Oh. Yeah. So God knows better than we do. And and I believe that we are, uh, as because you did a Bible study on this about us being in the waiting room. And, yeah. and I do believe that we are in the waiting room right now because I know there are some praying people who are praying for this virus to, to, to go away. Uh, God, take this away from us. But He's, he's really, we might be in our delayed season right now, and there might be a reason for that. Right, because God has a purpose. For whatever he allows in our life, he has a purpose. And, and his purpose will be fulfilled. Uh, just like, again, back to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus' purpose was to come to die. Mm -hmm. But, it, but, it, but in the, in, in, when, it, when he finally came, uh, in contact with that hour, his human side, his human side, you know, got, got, got a little nervous. He said, you know, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, he came back to his senses right quick. Not my will, but let thine will be done. And when we go to God in prayer, we got to be more concerned about God's will being done. Mm. God will be done. Uh, God, we want you to remove this coronavirus, but nevertheless, not my will. Let your will be done. Pastor, <laughs> that, that's hard sometimes, man. <laughs> it is. It is. 
It is. It is. But we have to sell out to God. When, when, we, when, we, uh, when we put our lives in his hands, then we just got to believe that, that whatever happens, God is doing it for our best. God is doing it for our best. Waiting is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, waiting is hard. Being denied is hard. Being denied is hard. M Mama, your mother, your mother or your father wouldn't have bought you a car at 12 years old. I don't care how bad you want it. Because they could see that you weren't ready for it. Right. That it will it was do you more harm than good. And so sometimes we have to we we have to always look at God as 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 a parent. We come before him as children. I don't care how old we are. Mm -hmm. We come before him as children. And and, and we, we have to uh, when I was a little kid, there was a a a, 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 a picture that came on. Uh, 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 it was uh, Father knows best. <laughs> Father knows best, and so when we go to God in prayer, we got to go with that attitude. No, that that was a long time ago because you said yeah, that was real loud. Yeah, that was real loud. That little sitcom, long, long time ago. Yeah, you, you wouldn't know nothing. <laughs> but dealing with the principle still remains that father knows best. Because father can see from the beginning to the end. Right. So he knows what goes on in between. That's true. That's true. And 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 looking at that and how we did because uh we we can look at this thing and we can say, hey. Um, yes, I'm going to wait on God, but as I still go through life, because we're still going to have to go through the, this this cycle of dealing with our uh, losing special people that we love, uh, getting piled up, uh, losing our job. There are a lot of people who got laid off because of this virus. Uh, families not acting right. But how can I say it? I'm, I'm a Christian? I believe God. I'm, you're going to see me through this. Um, but how can I really deal with this pressure? I know I'm. I got to keep on praying. But how can I deal with the pressure of life just coming on me? Yeah, and I, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard me say this before. Uh, we have to open God's mouth. Mm. And, and, and the Bible, the Bible is the mouth of God. God spoke as as men wrote, and, and it's tough, man, John. It's tough. I, I wouldn't. I, I kid you not. It's tough because we were taught and we were told uh, that if we be honest and live a righteous life, that we will have rewards. Mm -hmm. uh, but but a dishonest and a wicked person. Uh, would be filled with pain. And so it's hard when you're trying to live right and then instead of rewards, you know, you're getting pain. Mm. Your world is caving in on you. You know, that, 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 that becomes difficult. And, and, and the thing is that it's not just difficult for, for it's not just difficult for Unbelievers is difficult for believers, mm -hmm. and, and and we we got to have some word in us to to sustain us, you know. And Paul Paul wrote in in uh, I think in Second Corinthians uh, chapter four somewhere he talked about uh, we are hard pressed, you know. We 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 are we are knocked down. Uh, we 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 are in despair. Uh, we're persecuted. But he says this, and this is what's important. He says, but we are not abandoned. Right. We are not abandoned. We, we get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. You know, and, and, and we might be going through a season right now of being knocked down. I know we're perplexed, but we are not abandoned. That, that, that's what David said this in the 23rd Psalm. He said, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow? Of death, I'll fear no evil. And the reason why, he said, because God is with me. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. God, God promised to be with us. He, he didn't say that he would be with us in the good times all, all the time. So, so we, must, we must choose to trust God in all areas of our life, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, when we're happy, when we're sad. We, we got to trust God. We got we got to trust God. When we trust God, it's impossible. It's impossible to be overcome by bereavement. You know, we 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 lose people. You know, and I, I I've had some painful uh, homegoing celebrations there at the church. Right. People I I really care about, and people I I'm really close to. You know, but 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 you know, it it, it brings tears to my eyes. Uh, Sometimes. Uh, uh, my eyes are drowning with tears, but God still sustains me. He still keeps me, you know, and, and it's tough. Life, life is tough. Mm -hmm. Life sometimes is like playing a, a, a bid whist, a deck playing some cards, playing bid whist, and getting a bad hand, <laughs> you know, bad hand. You, you know, we sometimes get, get dealt a bad hand. Yeah, yeah. It dealt a bad hand, but we got to know what to do with a bad hand. We we got to trust God when we get a get a bad hand. Pressures of life, they will steal your mind, steal your mind. Listen at this: the pressures of life will steal your mind and blame you for having a mental breakdown. <laughs> yeah, life is life. Life is tough, man. Life life is tough. And no matter how strong we are, there are some things that we can't handle by ourselves. Yeah, I can I can remember a time where um, I had a disagreement at the church, and I remember coming directly to you. And, you know, I, I wanted to hear what you were going to say. But the first thing that you did was you opened up the Bible, and you took me to, to the Word. I think you took me to Matthew um, talking about if you have ought with your brother, go to them one on one. And then if you don't get anywhere with that, then you take a couple with you. And then after that, then you take it to the church. And a lot of times we try to do it the opposite way, and we'll run to the church first. Amen. And then we'll try to handle it backwards. But that's not always the way. But I know every time that we have disagreements or different things happen, you always take us to the word. Amen. Because you want to make sure that we understood that that's, that's where we get our, our answer from. And that's our source of strength. You know, his word can do way more than my word can do. Mm -hmm. You know, my word ain't nothing but, but, but an opinion. But God, God's word is, 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 is life. God's word is life. So, so uh, we need the word of God to guide us through life. And if you're any kind of believer, then regardless of how you're feeling, uh, or how you view a situation, when you look in the word of God and see what God says, it, it should move on your life. It should, it should move on your life. It, it should move you. Mm -hmm. you know? So, so that, that's, 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 Basically, I, I that's all I try to know, especially when there's when there's a conflict. Now I, I'm, you know, I like to have fun. You know, I like to have fun. You know, I like to laugh. But when when it gets down to business and it's serious, then all all I want to know is what God has to say. Right. Yeah. Right. And and one of the things that um, I've been reading on is is still in Matthew, Matthew the seventh chapter is about those two gates. Um, one gate that's wide, <laughs> it's, it's everybody going to that gate, but there's very few that'll go down the narrow gate. Mm -hmm. There's very few. And I feel like that narrow gate, uh, pressure is gonna come. But a lot of times we don't wanna go through the pressure. So I'd rather go down the wide gate and it's not leading me nowhere but to damnation. Amen. That that that's following the crowd. Mm -hmm. that, that that's following popularity, doing what's popular, 
and doing what's popular doesn't lead you to uh, the kingdom living. You know, so yeah, that that way is narrow, and it's it's lonely. Uh, yeah, it's lonely. It's lonely. I mean, especially you know when when, when being a Christian your age, mm -hmm. it's not popular. No. It's just it's just not popular, you know. And and if you if you're going to be committed, then you're going to have to realize and understand that you'll have to deal with some lonely seasons. Yeah, because there there are moments that I, I I've I've said to myself, I was like, you know, do I really have to be doing all this? <laughs> Is it do do I really need to be going? Why am I accepting this call? <laughs> right now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. doing something else. I don't have to be coming to church every week, every week. Yeah, you know that it's things like that that I think about. You know, some of my friends who are living it up, and they don't go to church, or right. they only go to church once a month or something like that. It's like, why am I not uh, living like that? Or uh, why am I not experiencing what they're experiencing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and if 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 you if you can do without your call, then it simply says you weren't called. Mm -hmm. Because if 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 you if when you are called to a specific task by God, then He has His hands on. You. He has His hands on. You. And you you can't you can't deny his calling. You I can't try. deny his hands upon you. And I tried. <laughs> yeah, he, he always bring you back. He always bring you back. Yes, sir. He because he he has when he has he has given you an assignment. Then you can be around here till you fulfill that assignment. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you whether you want to fill it in misery or you want to fill it in com compliance. In compliance, sometimes you may have misery. Mm -hmm. But but when, when, when God has a special assignment for your life, you set aside. It doesn't matter what the, what the crowd does. Mm -hmm. He sets you aside. You know, that just just like this old this old toothbrush illustration. Uh, a, a toothbrush is sanctified. Nobody else can use it. Yeah. But the one who owns it. That's right. Nobody else should use it. <laughs> but the one who, but the one who owns it. That's right. <laughs> so just consider yourself, my brother, a toothbrush. <laughs> and, and 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 it's lonely and because this this conference is was geared towards our young people and young adults, uh, but adults are gonna get something from it as well. But I wanted us to shine some light on these different things because I know there are young people who feel like if I don't have a certain amount of friends, then I'm not doing nothing or, or nothing's happening for me. Uh, why am I not getting the best relationship? Why am I not getting uh, all the likes on social media? And, and, and you shine the light on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, God, God doesn't always look. Look at John the Baptist, man. How many, how many uh, Facebook pages you think he had? How many views you think he got? <laughs> John the Baptist was in the wilderness, man. Yeah, but he was a man sent from God, right? You know, and so he was content with his assignment. And and and, and I used I used to I can't even remember when I was young, man. What will I have? I can't even remember. What I, but there's a certain contentment that comes upon you when God gives you that assignment. Because th there was a time in my life I couldn't stay uh, from the party. Mm. You know, but, but but thank God that God called you uh, at an early age. You you're going to be a much greater greater pastor than I am. You know, because God called you at an early age. And I probably was called at an early age, too, but I, I didn't come as early as I was called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I couldn't get I couldn't get that life. I couldn't get that life out of me. 
until I until I surrender. When I when I surrender, you know, and then God has a way of making some things happen to cause you mm -hmm. to get in line. Yeah. You got a way of causing you to get back in line. Yes, sir. <laughs> but what I want to deal with is um or or shift our conversation a little bit, uh dealing with the young people of today. Um, I believe that most of them, if not all, are visual learners. Um, yeah. And so most of them will do what they see. Correct. And so um, what I see on social media, if there's a new dance out there, I'm going to make sure I learn that dance. Or if there's a new language out there, I'm going to make sure I know that language. Uh, this is what happens. They, what they see is what they try to do. So my question to you is, um, being that you've been doing this thing for, uh, what, over 30 years you've been pastoring? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm right at 35 now. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of things. And so I want you to help some churches out, help some parents out. How can parents or even the church compete with this social media age? Yeah, and, and one thing we got to remember, I mean, times might have been different, but the principle is still the same. We got to remember that we once were young. We, were, we, once, we once were young. You know, and young people, you know, they require connection. They want to be connected. They, they, they need to belong. They lack attachment. They need to be attached. And when they don't receive it, they become lonely. They become lonely. When they're not attached to anything, they become lonely. And when they become lonely, uh, they get the smartphone mm -hmm. instead of the smart parent. Mm. They get the smartphone instead of the smart parent to connect them, to connect them. And, and when, when, a, when a young person spends too much time on the internet, that's a sign of a symptom, not the problem. That's a sign of the symptom, not the problem. And, and, and the symptom is loneliness. Mm. The problem is disconnected, Dis disconnection. You can be in the house and still be disconnected from the folks in the house, right. in the house. I, I, in counseling, I have a lot of, a lot of times the spouse would come in, the female spouse would come in, and they and she would say, uh, you know, our problem is not him running around, it's not drinking, uh, our problem is that uh, communication, communication, and some of them say sometimes some of them say, Pastor, I got a husband uh, uh, with a name on the mailbox, and that's all. Oh, wow. They're in the house together. But there's a disconnection because of a lack of communication. And, and I think that's what, where we struggle at in, in trying to communicate with, with, with young folks. You know, at one time I thought, oh, being old school, uh, when, these, when these phones came out and all the texting and all that kind of stuff, I said, man, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. I, I just want to talk on the phone. But then I realized. That, that I got some young people at church. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to connect with them, I got to try to meet them where they are. And so, so uh, young people uh, cannot and will not, as you said earlier, be what they don't see. Mm -hmm. Be what they don't see. And so we, we have to connect with them. You know, if, if we're if we're going to uh, be able to deal with this electronic age, and I mean, being a part of social media is not all bad. It, it's not all bad. It, it's bad when you ease God out. Mm. When you ease God out, when you look for all your answers on social media and ease God out, that's, that's when it becomes bad. 
but but then our responsibility. And sometimes we wait too long. See, Steve, that that's that's what happened to you. You got caught early. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you you got you got caught early. You got caught at the roots. You know, and and sometimes we wait too long. Uh, to impact our kids, to impact our kids. Uh, young people uh, learn, like you say, visual. Mm -hmm. they, they learn, and, and, and not only just being able to see something, but young people are able to visualize things. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, able, to, they are, they're able to visualize things. Uh, Joshua lived his faith before his ch family. Uh, he did not send his children to church. He took them to church. He took them to church. And young people, our most important resources, and I keep telling you, I said, well, our church got to get younger. Mm -hmm. Young people are our most important resources. They, they represent our past. And then they represent our future. Mm -hmm. They represent our future. And, and we should be careful about how we deal with, with young people. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says to train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Uh, they, they might stray. But if you plant that seed early, you know, they, they're coming back. Because they learn. They, they, learn, they learn what they learn at home. You know, I, I see kids now, man. I see kids uh, uh, three years old can handle a tablet, can handle a smartphone. Yeah. You know, because because we we have a tendency now that when they get upset and 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 they get angry, then we give them the phone to calm them down. <laughs> yeah, we give them the phone to calm them down. And so, so what else? Where else do they have to turn? Instead of giving them the phone, sometimes we need to look them in the eye and give them a hug, touch them. They like to be touched. Touch them. Give them a hug. Look them in the eye and tell and tell them we love them. Mm. Because that, that that the major the major their major education occurs at home. Wow. They learn honesty at home. They they learn respect at home. You know, we, we 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 learn respect, and that respect will carry you further than uh, your intelligence. They learn right from wrong. They learn dignity at home. They they learn the importance of God's word at home when they see you studying your Sunday school lesson or you reading your Bible. Hmm. You know, kids kids learn what they see, and if if they don't see you praying. Then they're not gonna be praying. You know, so so we we're setting a, an example that we have to answer for. And because children learn by example. You know, and ki kids kids are driven, man, because they have that they have that need to belong. They have that need to belong. And sometimes they'll lay down their values just to belong. Mm. Just to belong because they they need that companionship, and and most of them, you know, kids don't go out anymore, and and they don't go out. There there are not too many outdoor games that are attractive anymore, so they don't go out anymore. They meet all of their friends and they spend time with their friends, uh, on social media. Oh, you you said something. <laughs> I saw this one time. We went out to to eat before all this virus stuff happened, and we was in a restaurant. And there was a couple, young couple on a date. And the whole time, they were on their phones. My man. They were sitting my across man. from each other on their phones. The waiter came, they looked up, ordered their food. When the waiter left, they went right back to their phones. Yep. Yep. And that's just where we are. That's where we are. Yeah. You know the world. The world is constantly changing, and, and we we sh we we have to change with it, not for the bad, but we have to change with it. 
we have to make those uh, adjustments. You know, we have to make those adjustments. We can't afford to be so stiff, mm -hmm. stiff-necked until we're not able to make an adjustment. Uh, we, we, when we come out of this, we're going to have to make another adjustment. Mm -hmm. You know, another adjustment. The world is constantly changing. The only thing that remains the same. The word. God and his word. And you, you remember what you said when this thing hit? <laughs> <laughs> a report hit about YouTube and you being on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, God, God, like I said, if God have your assignment, He got a way to getting you to it. <laughs> he got a way way of getting you to it, you know, because uh YouTube, Facebook, none of that was ever on my mind. <laughs> you know, but, but but God has a way uh, of leading you to his assignment. And he got a way of doing it where you can't back out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't back out. You went from not doing it at all to doing it every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And it wasn't by choice. Mm -hmm. But now, but now, you know, I'm comfortable doing it because the word gotta go forth. Right. Right. The word gotta go forth. And 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 sometimes God God leaves us out there to create a way. Mm -hmm. To get his word out, so the word must go forth. So I'm content now, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm content. And, and and I think God is letting me know that you better get ready for the future. <laughs> you know, get ready for the future. I mean, we trust and pray that people will continue person to person worship. Right. But but in spite, I think that there's gonna be. You know, a falling away, mm. a falling away, because people feel like they can lay down in their bed and get the, get get service on Sunday morning without going to church. That was one thing that you taught us um, about. There's in the word never to forsake. We can't forsake the assembly. Um, let us know a little bit about how do you feel about it, especially for the young people, understanding that we. What's the importance of that scripture, of us coming together? Well, God promised his presence wherever we come together. And he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't put a limitation on it. He didn't care whether it was a mega church or a small church. He said, we're two or three are gathered in my name. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll be in the midst. I'll be in the midst. So, so God wants us together because uh, I think Solomon said two are better than one. And sometimes Sunday morning is the only time we have to lay our burden down. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we work all week and, and we, 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 we have to, we, we, we have to uh, work in the midst sometime of unbelievers, non-believers, and people who just don't care. Yeah. You know, and we carry that burden uh, five, six days a week. But we, 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 we wake up on Sunday morning, ready to go because we got a chance to go somewhere where we can lay our burden down. We got a chance to see some friends we hadn't seen all week long. Mm -hmm. and, and there is nothing like a person to person fellowship. There's nothing like person to person fellowship. You know, you know the Lord, the Lord always gathered. The disciples together, together. He and even when he sent them out, he sent them out in twos, because two are better than one. If one fall in the ditch, the other one can help him out. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better you better know who you who you're running with. Yes, sir, you better know who you're running with. Yes, sir. And even, if, and even if they don't, Jesus will get you out. The man fell on the man, man fell on the Jericho Road. Church passed by. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus Jesus came by. And yeah. Well, well uh, the Samaritan represented Jesus. You know? Yeah. He represented Jesus uh, by his behavior. So, yeah, you're right. You know who you're running with. Exactly.
know, know who you're running with. Um, regardless of what we're going through, what should sustain us is that we know that God allowed it. And since we know he allowed it, we know that there's a purpose for it. And we also know that some good's going to come out. Some good's going to come out. So uh, we're going to have these seasons in life. We're going to have, gonna have these seasons in life. You know, It's easy to stand up and sing, I won't complain. Mm. But when that season turned bad on you, you know, you you might you might do everything else, but you know, life is real, man. And I don't care how strong we think we are and how strong we say we are as believers, there is something uh that can that can move us. You know, I know we say we shall not be moved and all that. There is something that can move us. But the only thing that keeps us steadfast is knowing where to take our troubles. Mm -hmm. The promise said, I will lift my eyes to the hill from where cometh my help. The thing is, I don't have to look to the hills, but I know where my help comes from. Right. You know, I know where to go when life turns sour. I know where my help comes from. You know, and and we just have to tell ourselves. You you know you you do you talk to yourself? I talk to myself all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm called a crazy person. I'm just crazy. <laughs> I guess you got a crazy past because <laughs> I, I have to keep reminding myself about what God said. Mm -hmm. You know, in spite of my situation, about what God says, because life will play tricks on. Yeah. And I have to tell I have to tell life, no, no, I belong to God. Mm. I belong to God. I'm covered in the blood. I'm covered in the blood. I belong to God. Mm. So you know, mister, you can get behind me. You right. know who he is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can just leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. We thank you all so much for joining us in our Make Room Conference. We will be here all week. We hope that you join us again on tomorrow night. We thank Pastor Hall for joining us. Thank you, sir, so much for taking your time out to be a part of this conference. And we hope that you all continue to pray for us and be with us. Be blessed. Thank you, man, for letting God use you. Just do what, do what God leads you to do. Thank you for letting God use you. Yes, sir. Thank you.